Real world assets will change the crypto market like nothing has done before for a simple reason. Right now, people that are trying to uh, accuse blockchain that is useless, they don't have any more an excuse for a simple reason. Right now, blockchain, it is demonstrating what is done by finance. I mean, treasury bills, uh, uh, real estate uh, or whatever could be done through a blockchain in a more efficient way, cheaper and uh, increasing also the audience, the potential, potential customers that could access these uh, uh, services. And that's something that it's not on me. That's not me that I'm saying that. It is something that is coming from BlackRock, the biggest company when it comes to uh, investing. They are managing literally trillion of uh, dollars and they are going, I'm not saying only because it would be wrong, but they are keeping a, a close attention, close eye on a, a, the whole crypto market. They are launching right now their own ETF. We are all waiting for that approval. But on the other side, as they said, tokenizing real assets, that's an industry that can reach trillions of TVL. Just to give you a comparison, right now we have just 30 billion of TVL on blockchain. Imagine the pump that real world assets can bring. What I want to do with you today is talking about free projects. Some of them are pretty famous, are uh, other are not so much, but all of them are having a common goal and are doing pretty interesting things. Not to mention that they have also interesting partnerships. So maybe they could be good horses to bet for the next bull run. But before to start, guys, let me say this channel is about educational content. Nothing has to be intended as financial advice. If you want to invest in anything, that's super fine. But we'll always your own research before. And guys, don't forget to leave us a big thumbs up. Drop a comment. That's the best way you have to support us. And if you do that, I would be more than grateful. Okay, guys, let's start immediately with the first project I have selected for you. The first project I want to start with is Frax. I know Frax is a pretty famous uh, project, Frax Finance, Frax uh, its own stablecoin, FXS is the uh, governance token and also the one that is accruing some uh, benefit. But uh, right now they are launching a new product, not to mention that they are launching a completely revamped version of their own platform. Frax version 3 right now is under testnet and soon will be released on mainnet. And pay attention to the moment when uh, Frax version 3 will be released on mainnet because in that moment, uh, well, closer to that moment, there could be some pump into the price because it's a big revolution. More services that are offered to uh, the audience of uh, the Frax finance platform. It means more revenues for the platform. It means more value for the token too. Uh, the service that I want to focus today is called FXB, so Frax Bond. It is pretty a simple uh, concept. What they are doing is exactly as if when you are buying a T bill, they will give you, let's say that you want to buy a one dollar of a of a bond, a United States bond. You will have the opportunity to buy it for zero point ninety five around that price, and uh, at the maturity, at the final day uh, when at the deadline, you will be able to uh, swap that the FXB that is representing a TBL for FRAX. And I want to stop for a second. This is the mechanism. It's not that you are buying a TBL. That's a big difference from what we are uh, seeing on FRAX Finance compared to what we are seeing, for example, on other projects that we'll show you in a moment. In this case, you are not buying a, a real T bill, a real bond. What you are buying is a token that is giving you always the ability to convert them at deadline for a specific amount. And that uh, um, stablecoin frax is at the end collateralized by uh, T bills and bonds. So it is just frax finance that is having uh, the uh, bonds, but you don't own any of them. So there is no direct relation be between the, the token and the bond. How they will launch the, uh, the bonds, as you can see here, they will use uh, auction, uh, Dutch, uh, Dutch auction to be, uh, to be fair. 
and more details will be uh, shared into the next future. Right now, if you want to try it out to the system, you can use uh, the Frax version free on Testnet. Before doing the analysis of the price of the Frax Finance token, I want to show you the other two projects. And at the end, we will do together the analysis of the price to understand which is the current state of the art of the market and if this could be a good moment or not to buy. But that's something that we'll do at the end of the video. I want to move to another project that has been pretty hype in the last couple of uh, months and weeks, and I'm talking about Canto Public. Canto has uh, uh, born as a blockchain, uh, an EVM blockchain layer one that was uh, uh, focused on DeFi. What I have changed the last uh, couple of months is moving from just being another layer one EVM just talking about DeFi to become a real world asset a blockchain for tokenizing real world asset that would uh, become a layer two on uh, Ethereum vertical on this uh, matter. So a pretty interesting approach. And why, if you're thinking why they have done that? Well, mainly for a simple reason. Right now, the level of uh, competition in, between layer ones is insane. And uh, many are trying to switch to becoming just uh, from a, a general purpose blockchain to something that has a specific identity. That's something that I have been saying many times during this uh, couple of years on my channel. This is something that's pretty normal for any market. All the markets are starting with everyone that, that are trying to do the same general purpose. But at the end, the more the market is maturing, the more effort is required to differentiate the value proposition. And that's exactly what Canto Public is trying to do. I don't know if they will be able to succeed because at the end of the story, when it comes to real world assets, it's also a matter to understand who will start using it, which kind of partnerships they will be able to close with uh, institutions, corporations, or whoever they, uh, they want to work. So it's a big step from the branding point of view. I really appreciate that. I really like the idea of having a vertical on this niche because this niche is something, that, as I said at the beginning of the video, could literally change the market. As you will see also in a moment, the market has reacted pretty well to this announcement and the price is pumping. Could pump even more? Yes, it can. Uh, into the short term speaking. Long term speaking is literally too early to say if Country Public will be the winner into this niche. Don't just fell in love with any of this project. I talked about Frax Finance. Uh, right now I'm talking about Canto Public. In one of my previous videos, I will also leave the link to the right corner here. I talk about many different projects that are doing uh, T-bills and so on. But at the same time, be aware that it's still too early. Being the first doesn't mean being the winner. Because many times projects that have uh, uh, been able to enter for first uh, failed for the simple reason that that project came after. They had the opportunity to learn from the mistakes made by this project and simply starting from the scratch. That's a big advantage. So be aware of that. Before going to the third project and uh, uh, doing after that the uh, price analysis for the three projects, I want to stop for a second. Uh, to uh, remind you about uh, Rubydex. If you missed my video about the full analysis uh, of that project, I will leave also the link in the right corner here. And today I want to focus on the airdrop. That's something that is pretty interesting right now because as we all know, yes, the market is pretty choppy. Yes, the price of Bitcoin is going up, but uh, it's not like being in a bull run. Right now, this is the best moment to start farming for airdrops. And one of the platforms that is offering you the opportunity to farm for an airdrop is Rubidex. How? Well, it is pretty simple. You can earn points that will be in, in the future. We don't know yet the conversion and how the points will be used in order to define the amount of tokens that you will receive. But it's something that should happen into the next future. They are keep pushing, closing partnerships. Uh, uh, we have uh, different players, blockchains, as you can see, many of uh, uh, the new blockchains are supported right now on Rubidex. And you can earn points just by depositing uh, with the amount of uh, the balance that you have on your account, inviting new users and trading. Plus, down here you have special points. One of them is on Galaxy that is allowing you to mint an NFT. Uh, deposit, the more you deposit, the more points you will receive. One thing that is pretty important, guys, is that these points are updating every week. So if you keep using the app every week, you will be able to collect more points. 
So personally speaking, what I'm doing, I'm using different platforms to trade. One of them is also a uh, Rubidex. And uh, I'm trying to collect more points from my account each week because each week uh, all the points will be already available for each of these uh, voices. If you have any questions about um, a Rubidex, let me know into the comment section below. We'll also leave all my links to have also a 10% discount on fees. Okay, let's go back to the last project I want to present to you today. It is called Swore Markets. I have been talking about uh, uh, several times about Swore Markets because uh, that's something I'm following since uh, their IDO in 2021. I literally bought at the IDO. And since then, they have evolved a lot. This is one of the few platforms that is allowing to um, retailers to buy, obviously this one is requiring KYC, to buy stocks and also bonds directly from the blockchain. All you have to do is just click on invest now, uh, do the KYC procedure, it's pretty fast, it takes just a moment, and you will be able to buy the real world asset. The difference between what we have seen from Frax Finance and Swore Markets is that in the moment when you are buying on Swore Markets, you are buying the um, tokenized, a bond, a tokenized stock. It's not like buying something that it is only convertible for the um, Frax uh, token, that is a stable coin and so on. In this case, you are holding a, a tokenized, really tokenized stock or a T-bill. Uh, right now, the platform is still young, but it's moving pretty well in closing partnerships with different uh, institutions. Because one peculiarity of this market, as I've said many times, is that it is slow. Yes, it's still crypto and blockchain, but when it comes to uh, regulations, when it comes to institutions, closing partnerships, that's something that requires a lot of time. So maybe a project could have done 70% of the work, but uh, maybe they have not been able yet to show you anything, simply because these kind of things are requiring a lot of time. In this case, I'm not referring specifically to small markets, but to any project is working into the real estate, the real world asset, the institution, and so on. Because closing that kind of partnerships, I don't know if you have a work with a corporation institutions or bureaucracy. Well, the time that is required to do anything, it is pretty long. Okay, let's jump to the price analysis. I want to start with the, the last one that is a, a Swore Markets because it is pretty interesting. As you can see, they started from here in 2021, big spike, big dump. But after that, from this year, they started again to grow. Right now, they are at a pretty interesting uh, level because if you check the price, we are just at this resistance here. If we are able to break this level and we have just broken the first one, it was at 9.10. If we are able to keep this pump, we can reach, first of all, the uh, around 17, 20, per, uh, 20 cent, that is around two times the actual price. But after that, there is a, an exploration phase, or at least it's not really exploration phase because we have a target and the target is around one dollar. It was the top of the previous bull run. But the beauty is that aside from this top that was uh, early this year, there is nothing until uh, uh, the one dollar. It doesn't mean that we will reach this price, this uh, uh, run here. Maybe it could be next uh, year or whoever. Maybe the project will fade tomorrow. I don't think so, but it's always a possibility. I'm saying that just to provoke you a reaction, guys. I want you to be aware any of these projects can fail tomorrow. That's the reality. And be aware of that. And the sooner you understand that, the better you will be able to make money into this industry. Okay, as you can see, another thing to check is the market cap. Right now, the market cap is about 6 million. The fully liquid valuation is about 27 million. They have also a barn a mechanism in order to decrease the uh, total supply that is going down into the last couple of uh, weeks and months and will keep going down into the next future. But that's another story. So keep an eye on that because if we are able to keep this uh, uh, trend, Again, guys, pay attention to Bitcoin because if Bitcoin uh, lose the support at 33, well, that's not a good sign. It could also be a bad sign also for swarm markets. I want to start with Canto. As you can see, after the announcement of uh, the new revamp of Canto, Canto has been pumping like never before. It has done a nice uh, 3x. 
right now we are at this level and uh, the next target could be this one into this area. So around 0.35, it is reachable into the next couple of weeks if the trends keeps and Bitcoin obviously is healthy. After that, the next target is over here. That is about 0.82. So it means another free X. Uh, I think that it is really important to understand how the... Uh, a resistance at 0 0.33 for 35 will react. If we are able to break this resistance with energy, well, it is something that could be pretty positive. On the other side, I want to also show you that there is a, a quite a, a bearish divergence when it comes to the RSI, because if you look at here, we made here a top that is around here. After that, the, the this top here, it is equivalent to a lower level here. So this is not a good sign. So another possibility is to see uh, some kind of correction before trying to test again the uh, resistance. That's something that we don't know what will happen. I'm just want to show you the different scenarios. Going to uh, Frax Finance, as you can see, the situation is pretty different from what we have seen with uh, Kanto. As you can see right now, we are simply into this uh, uh, sideways a situation and we are far away from any of uh, uh, the major resistance. We are approaching here as a, as you can see the 200 days uh, uh, simple moving average. This will be a big test. If we will be able to break this dynamic resistance, well the next target is about 6.76. I think that uh, if everything goes well, we could have the possibility to test the 6.76. If not, well, that's a pretty bad sign, honestly speaking, for Frax Finance. And uh, I would start wondering why this project, even if it is embracing the real world asset uh, narrative, is not able to pump. My opinion, it could recover. If we are able to break this resistance here, 6.76, well, in that moment, we have space to grow because the next one could be considered this one at 10, and after that, it is about 15, uh, 14. Honestly speaking, I would wait to see first if Frax is able to uh, break the 200 days moving average. Second, if we are able to break the 6.76 uh, uh, resistance. If yes, yes, in that moment, uh, maybe it could be worth to. Uh, to consider a position uh, to, to be open on this pair. Guys, let me know what you think about these three projects. Uh, I will leave all, all the links in the description below. Let me know if you have any question, and I will see you soon into another video. Bye, guys.